Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Merge Marketing Podcast, a show for business owners and marketers that want to be the go-to in their industry. We discuss various topics that will improve your marketing, your mindset, and of course, your overall business. Today, we are discussing how to increase productivity and profitability with Jennifer Jimbery. Let's now transition over to the interview. We hope you enjoy the ride. You're listening to the Merged Marketing Podcast with David Louch and Jason Hunt. This is a show all about unlocking the marketing tactics and secrets behind everyday brands. Each week, we'll bring you expert commentary so that you can make better choices when it comes to growing your business. Thank you for spending time with us. Now let the show begin. Well, David, how about that, huh? That was a pretty good episode. I liked it. And, uh, you know, I think our, our listeners here are going to get uh, a ton of value from this episode. It's a quick and dirty one. It's um, it's, it's definitely not uh, the marathon podcast that we've had in previous episodes. Um, we get right to it. You know, we're going to be talking today about productivity in your business. And one of the, one of the things I like to do um, when I get into these type of conversations with like business coaches and business professionals is I like to be a little selfish and, yeah. and, and try to find areas where we can get some value for ourselves. And yeah. naturally our listeners are going to get that value as well. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some things like, for example, you know, we talk about time blocking and the importance mm-hmm. of time blocking in your schedule. Mm-hmm. And I do that. So I thought it was a bit of a keener because I do time block. I, I'm a mm-hmm. slave to my schedule, but, um, In actuality, it's not as efficient as it can be because there's no lead measures, Mm. you know, to to kind of quantify those efforts that I'm making in my calendar. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer dives into that a bit today. Yeah, she definitely does. And, and, you know, Jennifer, uh, she's a business coach and consultant that I've spoken to quite a bit in the past, uh, just having known her through other business um, colleagues. And she's extremely knowledgeable. She's been doing this a long time. She knows how to help businesses grow, take them to the next level, and really optimize their their productivity and profitability, which we also go into in this episode as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, building off of what you just said, you live very much in your calendar, and and I do too, to an extent. But the one part that kind of spoke to me and all of that was the 45 minutes working and then the 10-minute brain break. Because after that 45 minutes is is when you get brain fatigue. So your decision-making ability is not going to be as as high or as clear as it might be during those 45 minutes of work time. So the big takeaway is more breaks. More breaks. More (laughs) breaks. Jennifer uh, is a big book reader as well. She is. So if you're an avid book reader, you're going to get a few, few little nuggets in this episode. She reads a book a week. A book a week. When we spoke, a book a week. And what what did she say? Something about, uh, oh, she reads books in case the day Google crashes. In case the day Google crashes. Hopefully that's not anytime soon, but you never know. You never know. Well, I think enough about us and more about Jennifer. How about we kick it to the episode? Let's get it. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whenever and wherever you're listening from today, thank you and welcome to the Merge Marketing Podcast. Today, Jason and I have another exciting episode for you. Our guest today is Jennifer Jimbery, an entrepreneur, international best-selling co-author of the Dream Boldly, I Dare You series, world-class coach and business consultant. She is a recognized authority on change management, profitability, and organizational turnaround, and has served as an advisor to thousands of individuals and organizations around the world for more than 20 years. Jennifer has been named Influence Magazine 100 Authority. Strategic Learning Alliance recognized Jennifer as Certified Professional Coach of the Month for April 2019. Her work has been featured in the Six Figure Coach, Simply Women, Bella Mia Magazine, and more. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for the opportunity, David. You're welcome. Jason and I are super excited to have you today. Um, So uh, we'll dive right into it. Basically, um, I want to start the way we start most of our episodes, and that is uh, I was hoping you could share a little bit more um, with our listeners about who you are. So how did you get into business consulting and coaching and uh, maybe what uh, some of your keys to success have been so far and would love to, to start back as far as possible. 
Sure. Yeah. I got into coaching about 12 years ago when I was a bank manager and we were asked to coach our teams and none of us as leaders knew what that meant. So uh, from there I ended up going out and getting certified and that's kind of where the journey began into business coaching and consulting. So I uh, continued my work from the bank, went into financial services again with Edward Jones and was responsible for all the professional development in Canada. And about five years ago, I took the leap and launched my own private practice. So a little bit about me, I read like Google's going to crash. I always have a few books on the go. And um, I'm a wife of 23 years and mom of two teen boys. Wow. You got a lot going on, eh? Yeah. Read, I love that. Read books as if Google's going to crash. Yeah. <laughs> I've never quite heard that before, but yeah, that that is interesting. Stealing it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that, Jennifer. Really appreciate the, uh, the backstory. Um, so I guess as a business coach, you get to speak to a lot of business owners, uh, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, these sorts of people in your role. Um, and for the most part, they're probably coming to you because they need help with something and they're facing certain challenges in their business, right? Right. So, you know, for the most part, this is a marketing show and, and a business show overall. So, um, you know, business, business struggles outside of marketing will certainly be relevant here uh, for our audience. But maybe if you could share specifically what some of the biggest marketing challenges facing businesses and business owners today are based on just some of your experience maybe in the last uh, year or two? Yeah, I would say the biggest obstacle is simply inertia. They're overwhelmed with the options um, and all of the different platforms that they have a chance to have a voice in. So their marketing efforts are challenged in terms of conversions. So maybe the message needs uh, a little bit more clarity in order to get the right leads in, in order to see the conversions and transactions that they're after. So I would say the biggest challenge in the next level growth that I support is, you know, trying to answer the question, I'm not sure what to do next. Yeah, and, and does that does that come down to just the fact that there's so much options out there, opportunity out there, different ways to advertise, different ways to spend money? Absolutely. Yeah, I would say there's, you know, a plethora of opportunity and there's only so many, so much time and so much money to execute excellence. It's almost like it sounds like, Jennifer, that there's like two faucets to it. There's like, um, you know, there's so many ways to kind of, uh, you know, generate a conversion, generate leads and, and which option do you go with, which is going to be best for your business, uh, you know, to increase, you know, efficiencies and productivities. And then there's the other side of the coin where you're talking about that message that needs clarity which is kind of different from what we're talking about here, right? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of time when I work with business owners and they haven't yet established what their market dominating position is. They just know that they have a place in the market and they're really good at that thing, but they haven't established how are they differentiating themselves and creating that market dominating position. So when you start, is that, would that be where the conversation starts? It's figuring out and clarifying that message and then the other, the other, factors like the productivity and efficiencies, all that type of priority stuff falls into place? Yeah, I would say first anchor is the plan. Like, do they have a plan for their business? Are they executing, you know, on with discipline on certain things? Do they have a wildly important goal or two? Are, do they have lead measures that they're acting on every week? And uh, is there a scorecard that tells them if they're winning or, or not? And so once we have the plan in place, then we look at the five key areas of business growth that I typically focus on with people, which is your messaging, your marketing, your sales, your offers, and your systems. And so systems kind of ties in all of that, the profit opportunity for your business. So could you repeat those one more time, Jennifer? You said messaging, marketing. Sales, offers, and systems. Sales, offers, and systems. If you were, if I, if, if I were to ask you which one of those five would you put highest in the totem pole of responsibility, which one would you go with? I would say I would never prescribe that. As a business coach, I'm going to find out from that individual business where is there a struggle, 
what's the pain point and from there we zone in on one area we need to improve on first because a lot of times as you know there's messaging might be on point but yet the confidence in their pricing is not which goes with offers right their messaging might be on point so they are getting the leads but yet their conversions are not occurring which means we need to do something with the sales process so I think the approach that I take is individualized to each business and we zone in on where is that pain point. It's interesting because you know a lot of people in businesses say sales cures all, but in actuality there are four other factors that people need to consider. 100%. So I guess um, how do you approach problem solving when coaching these clients through some of these big issues that they're facing in their business? Uh, I think it's creating the right environment uh, for them to have an opportunity to share openly and uh, to communicate where those pain points and challenges are. So how I approach it is figuring out what is today's reality. And when we know what the reality is, then we can take a look at what is the goalpost. What are we trying to get to? So in order to get there, we need to establish a focus, discover what's possible, and then plan the action. And a lot of times a step that's missed is removing any barriers that are in their way. Mm -hmm. And then we have the opportunity to create the right plan to get to that goal. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of individuals who are really, really strong in their business, even very strong at marketing their business. Mm -hmm. Yet there are skills that are really important for business growth that are missing, such as skills or confidence in their pricing, etc. Interesting. So I'd like to, Jennifer, if it's okay with you, I'd like to kind of play this out and, and just kind of, you know, use a tangible example, which would be our business. You know, we've got a, got a small agency here, a boutique agency with about 12 employees, and uh, we're servicing a lot of small to medium sized businesses. We've, we just merged our company last uh, beginning of last year. It was, a, it was a social media company and an SEO company. We merged them together to form a new company. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you go into a company like our small business and, and help us? I definitely want to take a look at how the change was managed and where everybody's at in that change. Because I'm also a change management practitioner. So there's times when we prescribe a plan without having people on board for that plan. <laughs> So what we want to do is check in to find out where everybody's at, whether or not that plan seems like it's going to work for the team and manage how people are moving through that. Because 12, you said within the last month, within the last year? Yeah, it was last, so it was about just, uh, just under a year. Yeah, so that's not that much time. And there's processes that typically need tweaking and support during change. So that's probably where I'd want to check in to figure out what is happening in the team, um, right? So everyone understands what the desired outcome is and the best way to get there. So would you conduct interviews with all, all levels of, of management, uh, including employees? So typically what we would do is work with the owners of the business mm -hmm. and then have sessions with the team together so that we're communicating the change in a way that actually inspires action to happen and inspires an opportunity for people to communicate openly about what might be blocking the change. So we have some experience in, in, I mean, last year, it was probably a little more than last year, David, where, where we uh, had a company retreat and we read a few chapters of a book called Traction. Mm -hmm. um, I believe John Wickman is the author of that. Um, and it was really, it was really good for us to get away and kind of have a goal and it's kind of an idea as to what we're willing to achieve when we go away. But there was really no, there was nobody really quarterbacking it. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of see this as an area where someone like you and your expertise would be a really good fit for a lot of those companies out there that, that aspire to have this sort of company retreat, get on the same level, de level, develop a culture and, you know, those missions and goals and things like that. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we need to provide feedback as we are in a performance industry and we're working with individuals. So when we don't have a framework that establishes guiding principles for the company, it's difficult 
as leader to provide effective feedback. So what I would have thought would be helpful for something like that was actually establishing company guidelines that everyone buys into so that when you're not seeing the action or the performance as needed, you can then circle back to those guidelines and then give effective feedback. I find the biggest challenge was always has always been consistency. You know, mm -hmm. you know these great ideas, you know, for culture. It happens all the time. You know, we'll, we'll put in a new uh, initiative, whether it be like uh, weekly learning sessions where everybody on the team has to report weekly as to what they found during the, this week that was new and different from what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was good for a hot minute, but like everything else, it kind of falls off the map. So I find that was one of the biggest challenges with, uh, you know, putting any new initiative in place at a company. How do you handle that and, all, and, and the inconsistencies that people may have with some of these initiatives? I think it, it's really important. Consistency pays dividends. That's one of my kind of favorite sayings. So you're talking about a team huddle and the importance of that is critical because it provides that open dialogue. It provides opportunity for everyone in the team to share. It makes sure that everyone is understanding where you're going. So I would say one of the things that is valuable about my partnership with business owners is that cadence of accountability, which is the fourth discipline of execution in one of the books that I love called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Mm -hmm. So once individuals actually embed that into the culture three months, however long it takes, then they're going to continue that. So if it's something that comes, you know, you come back from a training event and you've got this exciting binder with great ideas, training is one thing. Executing on that and being accountable to it uh, with a coach is very different. Yeah, absolutely. And I shared, I shared Jay's thoughts there. We, we have definitely had that issue internally for us um, over the years. And are you finding that, that companies big or small are, are having this same problem? Yeah, absolutely. I think when there's a lot of, there's more good ideas than there is the ability to execute. So there's always going to be kind of new ideas coming. And so what we want to do is anchor in one to three wildly important goals for the year mm -hmm. and then be driving towards that. So one of the lead measures that you would execute on as a leader is to host those meetings. And it's not something that's negotiable in your calendar. And now a word from our sponsors. This week's episode is brought to you by Fresh Crowd. Fresh Crowd is a full service social media agency in Canada that specializes in everything social, from management to community building and advertising. Fresh Crowd can help your business attract a fresh crowd of people. Visit freshcrowd.com to find out more. Okay, so I want to move into a little bit more. Uh tactical things that people can take away from this, uh, from this episode specifically. So, you know, focusing in on productivity and profitability, which are probably, you know, two of the most important things to business owners and businesses today, you know, what are some tips around productivity and profitability that you can share with our listeners that will have an immediate impact on their business today? I would say, take a look at your calendar. What does it look like? Do you have time blocks? where there are critical lead measures that you execute on every week? And are you allowing for white space in that calendar so that you can be flexible when new meetings come up, new clients come up? Um, you know, time blocking is a critical skill for high performance. So 45 minute time block with a 10 minute break allows you to not get into decision fatigue and allows you to refocus, come back to the next thing. So my encouragement is for everyone listening to look at their calendar and see how productive are you being and are you blocking the right activities in your calendar. In terms of profitability, I think it's, you know, again, focused on the plan and lead measures. We cannot control the outcome of what we're doing. We have to control the things that we have, you know, in our calendars to drive that revenue and profit. So a lot of business owners focus on the lag and really what we need to do is focus on the lead, which is what can I control? What can I do this week to drive the business forward? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Do you have any others that you'd like to share around either that would uh, be super beneficial? I mean, I love those. I know Jason and I both, we live in our calendars. I, t- I time block religiously. And then that's, you know, it was almost like scratching my own itch because naturally I'm, I'm not the most organized. Mm-hmm. So I found time blocking really forced me to kind of be a slave to my schedule and become organized. Mm-hmm. Uh, one takeaway there, I think the, the, the lead measures is something that's not really in my calendar at all and having mm-hmm. some sort of a quantifiable metric um, to get me in line to, to meet those goals. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's as simple as, you know, let's just, if you're talking profitability, let's figure out what is our annual target. And then we break that down into weekly target and we do a, you know, a blank line slash out of the weekly target. And every week we update that so that we know where we're at and in sales, sales is numbers. So if the target, let's just say was 10,000 a week and we update that at, we brought in 8,900, well, there's a gap between 8,900 and 10. So we need to move that forward to the next week. So that's kind of the practical side of, of that piece around actually taking a look at where we are in the business. Yeah. And so one thing that was super interesting about the, uh, the calendar piece that you mentioned earlier was you, you said putting in time blocks and focusing on work for 45 minutes and then making sure you take that 10 minute break to be able to prevent uh, brain fatigue. Is that, um, so is that like, have you read that stat? Is that, is that science in terms of that? Yeah, is, absolutely. is that um, the- so one of the books, one of the books that I leverage a lot is High Performance Habits that refers, you know, to it. There's there's a lot of different books that refer to that piece of information because decision fatigue is a real thing. And when we get into a task, you know, there's there's two sides of that. We can be in flow and therefore time just kind of slips away. Yeah. And, you know, it's an activity that we really enjoy. However, the, the work that we produce at hour two when we stay in that work is not of high quality. Right. Interesting. Okay, perfect. Well, um, I guess just moving into the final portion, I know just from past conversations with you, you're super big on uh, professional and personal development. And you know, you said you're, you're reading at least a couple books at a time just in case Google ever goes down. So what, uh, what is your professional development routine like? And um, maybe what are the most impactful books you read in 2019 that you think our our audience should take a listen to if they want to take their business to the next level? Sure. So my professional development plan came with me outside of corporate. I was in corporate for 17 years. And so for me, even though this is year five of my business, every quarter I have a professional development plan, which means I'm currently taking a micro master's in leadership. I go to a certain number of conferences, I read a certain number of books and, you know, want to work with someone as a mentor. So I think your professional development plan matters and you need to look ahead and figure out, you know, where am I going? What might prevent me from succeeding and who do I need? Um, So those are, those are important questions to ask. Outside of the professional development plan, I would say some great books from 2019 would be uh, How to Run and Grow Your Business. I enjoyed that book and take a lot of pieces from it. Another one would be Expect to Win by Carla Harris. And it talks about the difference between um, mentors, sponsors, and coaches and how important it is for us to have five or more sponsors for our business. So those are people that'll talk about us and about our business in a positive light without us being in the room. Mm -hmm. And I would say the last one would be the five second rule. And that's actually a book I'm, I'm focusing on this week in my business page on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, The reason that I like it is it talks about how quickly we can talk ourselves out of action. And in order to get to that next level of growth, we have to be taking purposeful action that that gets us there. So uh, I love kind of the philosophy of the book and some of the pieces in it that I'll be sharing throughout this week. What's an example of of someone talking themselves out of action? Uh, You know, in the morning when you want to get up out of bed, you hit snooze. Right? right? And that's just a very practical, instead of just counting to five, swinging your legs off the bed and getting up. 
That's it. It's a count to five. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, it, actually, I've done that. And I forget where I've heard that. It's actually a countdown. <laughs> so that'll be all. Mel Robbins. Who is it? Mel Robbins. Okay. Yep. So three, two, one. Right. Go. Right. Go. And then yeah. that, that actually works really well because I can be lazy. But if it's not my dog licking my face, then I have to do the countdown. <laughs> exactly. So um, I know you got to run, so I really appreciate your time today. So thank you, thank you very much for coming on to the show. I think although this was a quicker episode today, our listeners got uh, a lot of valuable information from it, um, from how to be more productive at work, how to increase profitability, and uh, what to focus on. So um, thank you again. And, and if there's anything that you mentioned today in the, in the show that people are more interested in and want to chat with you more about, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? So they can visit jimboreecoachingandconsulting.com. They can connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email, jennifer at jimboreecoachingandconsulting.com. Okay. Thank you again. And of course, we would love to hear from you as well. So please reach out to us on social at Merge Media. Visit us online at merged.ca or email podcast at merge.ca. Okay, Jennifer, we have one final question. We end every single episode with this same question. And that is, if you could choose one person, dead or alive, to represent your brand, who would it be and why? Oh my goodness. Hmm. I'm going to say Benjamin Zander. <laughs> Benjamin Zander. I am not familiar with who that is. So it's definitely not one of those, you know, major social uh, influencers. He is the work that he did in the book called the art of possibility definitely framed my thinking for coaching. So my mantra, my coaching mantra is I believe that people are creative, capable, wise, and good. And in his book, he, he was, um, he was responsible for orchestrating the Philharmonic. And in his book, he talks about everyone has an A. It's up to them to maintain that A. And right. so it's just creating that kind of spirit of possibility for people that I think is, is how I go about creating happy clients. That's interesting. I always love asking that question at the end. I mean, it doesn't always necessarily apply to you know, individual influencers or single, um, single person businesses, but, uh, it still is a good question to ask and we get, you know, a different response every single time. And, um, that was a good one. Cause I actually did wonder where you came up with your mantra that you have on your website. So, um, I'm going to check out Benjamin Zander and the art of possibility. Awesome. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. I really enjoyed talking and if anyone wants to reach out, I'm happy to explore how we can partner in possibility. Okay. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. Take Thanks, care. Jennifer. Thank you.